I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we are in the sonar shack on the submarine Bakuna, SS-319. She's a World War II era diesel electric boat that is currently in her Cold War configuration. And she's a museum ship that you can visit in Philadelphia. She's part of Independent Seaport Museum's collection. Uh, so if you plan a trip to Battleship New Jersey and you're in the Philadelphia area, be sure to stop in on her as well. Uh, our two museums sell a joint ticket, and at different times of year, we even offer joint tours. So be sure to check our two websites for information on that. So, first of all, this is a Cold War era sonar suite. Bakuna uh, got what's called a Guppy 1A conversion, uh, which is a fairly large modernization to some of these uh, World War II boats that were still in service in the early Cold War before they were eventually phased out by the all-nuclear fleet. So in this configuration, Bakuna would have served alongside early nuclear submarines such as Nautilus uh, and older World War II submarines like the ones you can uh, tour today. And you can also tour Nautilus too. So uh, keep an eye out wherever you go on vacation, there's probably a submarine you can tour, even in the middle of uh, some cornfields. When we would plan family vacations, my uh, mother would always be amazed that I could find a museum ship to go to, even when we were in landlocked Oklahoma or uh, stuff like that. So keep an eye out. There were submarines in some very unlikely places. All right. So um, in the Cold War configuration, the sonar shack on Bakuna is actually under cruise mess, um, which makes it a little bit less... Uh, accessible than where it was originally during World War II. Uh, as built, the sonar shack was this little closet in forward torpedo. So it's um, a much larger space here now, which is befitting because sonar becomes more and more important over time. Uh, however, there are some drawbacks to having it here under uh, cruise mess. On one occasion, a jar of pickles sitting on a table in cruise mess, uh, fell as the ship was changing depths, therefore uh, angles, slid right off the table, right through the open hatch, and broke down here, scattering pickles all over the place. Really easy to clean up the pickles. Uh, the pickle juice, on the other hand, made it smell like vinegar down here for three solid weeks. So uh, if you're working in the sonar shack, you're probably always going to be hungry. It's a good thing submarines serve four meals a day. Um, but you have more space to yourself than elsewhere on the submarine. So, a uh, common question. The battleship has sonar, right? Wrong. The battleship has no capability of fighting submarines or undersea objects, and so there's no point in equipping her with sonar. Plus, battleships make so much noise, the sonar probably wouldn't be that effective anyway. Uh, so, if this confuses you, it's probably because I haven't defined sonar yet. Uh, sonar is an underwater detection method. There are two main types, uh, called active and passive. For active sonar, that's what you see in the movies, where you are sending out a pin. You are propagating sound waves through water, when that sound wave hits a solid object, it's going to bounce back. And you can listen to that echo and determine, based on how long it takes to get there, what the range and the bearing is to the target that you've just hit with it. Um, submarines don't have active sonar for sure, but they don't tend to use it because not only can I use that sound information to find a target, but that target can use that information to find my position. You just trace those sounds back to their origin. So more likely what you're using is passive sonar. And uh, passive sonar is just a guy with a headset on listening uh, for sounds. And as a ship moves through the water, it's making noise. Its propeller is making noise. Water running over the hull of that ship is making noise. Um, if there's stuff wrapped around the propeller shaft, anchor chain or rope or whatever, that's making noise. Um, you can also pick up biologics. So like a pot of whales go by. 
they're making noise. You, you can hear all of that. Um, you, you can pick up whale song, whale sound. Uh, so you can get a tremendous amount of information from just passive sonar alone. Well, you can't, but a trained sonarman can. Believe it or not, older World War II era diesel submarines uh, can be quieter than a modern nuclear submarine. They're basically the first smart cars. They have diesel motors that are creating electrical power, but when they're underwater, they aren't running those motors. Uh, they're running off of a stored battery charge. So there are very few moving parts and everything is extremely quiet. Anyone who's nearly been taken out in a uh, crosswalk by a smart car knows this. Nuclear powered ships are steam driven ships like the battleship. And, and there's a certain amount of inherent sound in that. You're creating uh, heat to boil water and then you're moving that steam through your boat and it is doing work moving turbines to move your propellers. Uh, so even though modern nuclear submarines are very, very quiet, they're still uh, louder than a diesel electric boat. Uh, so if you want to find one of these, you're probably going to need active sonar, uh, unless it's moving, in which case you might be able to detect it. But if it hears you first and it stops, it's just a black spot in the ocean. So the US Navy uses all nuclear submarines. Has everybody gone to all nuclear? No. Uh, many, especially coastal powers or smaller uh, navies, still operate diesel electric boats because they're so quiet. Uh, in shallow coastal water, it's relatively easy to find a nuclear submarine. Uh, nuclear submarines are great at sailing out in the open ocean and diving down hundreds of feet and disappearing. Uh, but uh, if you are, say, Iran, operating a navy in the Persian Gulf, you don't have that luxury, and you don't need a boat that can stay out at sea for six months at a time. You can accept a shorter range diesel electric boat uh, and have it go out and be absolutely quiet. And it would be very, very difficult for American anti-submarine platforms, including aircraft, surface ships, and our own attack submarines, to detect enemy diesel electric boats. Have you ever been on a ship that had sonar? While battleships and aircraft carriers tend not to, most other ships do. Uh, most other warships do, I should say. Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. And we really appreciate your support. There are links down in the descriptions if you would like to support either Battleship New Jersey or Independent Seaport Museum that's letting us film on board today. You can also support our museums by liking, sharing, and subscribing on our various social media. So we've got links to those down below as well. ISM has their own YouTube channel, so if you like the content we're creating, be sure to check them out too. Thanks for watching. This video was filmed with uh, content help from my counterpart here, Greg Williams. Greg shows up in all of the Bakuna videos that ISM produces, and uh, he is the submarine manager here. So thank you for your support, Greg.